Hello students, this is Mr. McAllen, and today we're going to talk about some basic things with binomial functions. First thing we're going to talk about is graphical transformations. Second thing we're going to talk about is when we do um, simple combinations of separate binomial functions. And the third thing we're going to talk about is what M behavior modeling of binomial functions is. So, on the first, uh, f f first example, um, we want to describe how to transform the graph of an appropriate monomial function, f of x, into a graph of the given function. Sketch a transformed graph by hand and then support it using a grapher. Now the grapher I'm going to use will be Desmos. Compute the location of the y-intercept as a check on the transformed graph. So, the very first function we see is g as a function of x is equal to 4 times x plus 1 quantity cubed. What we're going to consider is what x cubed looks like under normal circumstances, and that would just be a simple cubic graph. This graph, because of this transformation, has been switched or moved to the left by 1. This, was, uh, this is calculated by saying x plus 1, the material or the, um, the binomial on the inside of the function, is set to 0, and when we solve it, we get x equals negative 1. So we go to negative 1, we draw our transformed graph. I need a little more space. We plot our 0, not our 0, but our coordinate for where it intercepts the x-axis. And now, as a check, we should check to see where our y-intercept would be to see if it's in the neighborhood of our plot. So I plug in um, the 0 for the x value. And when I solve, I get y equals 4. So my y-intercept should actually be up a little bit higher. I'll change that. And that gives me an idea what the graph should look like. If I were to go to Desmos and graph this, I would see that that function looks exact well, not exactly the same, but pretty close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to Desmos real quick and put in the one monomial function and see if it appears to be the same. Clean up my graphing, and I'll put here g of x is equal to 4 times x plus 1 quantity cubed. Um, and you can see here that I have my 0 at negative 1, 0, and my y-intercept at 0, 4. So my hand sketch is pretty accurate as compared to what Desmos or the grapher that you have would provide. Moving on to the next problem, we have another function and we handle it just like a normal transformation that we did before. So in this case I have a fourth order function, fourth order monomial, which looks like a flattened out parabola. It's been sh vertically flipped over the x-axis and it's moving right to, and it's up 5. So I'm going to take the center, I'm going to go, I'm going to move it right to, up 5, and then I'm going to draw my, um, at the fourth order function as such, and when I verify this on, as for Desmos, let me just clean that up so I can read it. When I go to Desmos, I would have, I just have to memorize that function, so um, this would be h of x is equal to negative x minus 2 raised to the fourth power plus 5. So now I just need to. Um, turn off the other function, and you can see here that I have my, oh, I did plus 6, that should be plus 5, but the same general idea applies. I can see here that at 2 comma 5 is my, um, my ver not my vertex, but I would say the, um, well, you could call it the vertex of the function, and uh, you can see down here my y-intercept matches about where my y-intercept would be on my function, 
So I'm pretty pleased with that sketch. The next thing that we want to do in this short video is we want to look at graphing combinations of monomials. Here I have a simple monomial x cubed and another simple monomial y equals x. And you can envision that when we add them together, we should see the combination of the two. So this skill that we're trying to go over is just showing us that um, when you do added combinations of you know, simple monomials, they're kind of easy to understand what could be happening. So we have when we have x cubed plus x, we should imagine that the graph, because x appears like this, x cubed appears like this, we should imagine that the function when we add the values together, we're going to get something that looks like maybe something that looks like this. So that would be an example of just using known um, properties of the, other, of the individual monomials, and when we add them, we should see that added effect. So let's verify that with Desmos. And this is strictly a qualitative approach to understanding what adding monomials can be. Um, it's more or less thinking through the problem. So here I have x for my first function. I'm going to turn that on. Here I have for the other function, I have, um, well, actually, I'd just write this up as x write this one up as x cubed. And then when I add them together, you could see the combined effect of both functions. And if you're not quite sure, you can see as we get in closer, you can see how the purple function and the red function are um, the same in, in the, uh, in, for low values of x. And as you uh, follow the function out, as x gets really, really large, um, the red function and the black function appear to turn into the same function. And so you can see how there's like this combined effect from both functions being added. Let's show by uh, another example where we subtract the functions. So here, um, if we want to logically think this one through, before we looked at Desmos, we would say that as a, in a hand sketch, we have x cubed, but in the other sketch, we have negative x. So by maybe adding both of these, you might see something that looks like this, where in the middle, this one takes over. You see y equals negative x. But overall, when, when you get out to larger values of x, you see x cubed take over. So let's see what that graph looks like and see if we can make sense of it. So I'll plot it on Desmos, and we'll see if we get the same result. So I'll just go and start out with the original function that we, well, the, the overall function, we had x cubed minus x. So that you can see that we match up with what our picture said, but let's see if we could see the um, portions of the different functions. So for the one function, we had negative x. So you can see where that comes from in the black function. And now we'll look at x cubed. And you can see where x cubed has its influence on the function. As you can see, the green and the black function look almost identical. And then when you get close into 0, the blue and the black function look the same. And then when you get back out to negative x, I mean, negative values of x that are getting larger and larger, you see the green and the black function almost becoming identical again. So this is just, again, examples of when we add monomials, how those combined parent functions may appear. The last part is end behavior of polynomial functions. What is end behavior of polynomial functions? In order to discuss what end behavior of polynomial functions is, I could just give you the shortcut, but in terms of understanding it, when you look at this entire function, x cubed minus 4x squared minus 5x minus 3, when you examine the function and you go out to the ends, end behavior is basically categorizing 
what the function is doing as x goes to infinity and as x goes to negative infinity. Basically, as I head, not to use the word in the definition, but I, as I head out there towards infinity or out to the left, at the, at the left and the right end. So what's happening is, is all of these functions here have no influence on the function as compared to the highest degree polynomial term. So because this is a highest degree term, my function may be doing all sorts of wild and crazy things in, um, in the low values of x, but when I get out to the high values of x, it behaves like just x cubed. So if you ever say, use an end behavior model to categorize what this whole function would be, I would say as x goes to infinity, f of x behaves like x cubed. And as x goes to negative infinity, I would say f of x behaves like x cubed also. And you can really see this on Desmos um, because it, you know, you, we can put that whole function in. So I just have to remember that function, x cubed minus 4x squared minus 5x. So here, let's put in x cubed minus 4x squared minus 5x. I think it's minus 2. Let's turn off those other functions. So I'll take it out of presentation mode because that line is a little too thick to really understand what's going on. So, um, I, oh, it's minus 3, so this should be minus 3. And let me make sure the function is correct. x squared, x cubed minus 4x squared minus 5x minus 3. So when we look at that function, and then we compare it to its end behavior model. So here, there's end behavior model. You could see that the green function looks just like the black function here. And you may say, well, McAllen, it doesn't really look like the black function on the right side. But as you zoom out and you let x get to be really, really large, you could see um, as if very quickly the, um, the green function and the black function behave the same. So if I would zoom all the way out so you couldn't see the middle, like this region right where 0 is, you would say that the green function and the black function are identical. And that would mean that x cubed does in fact best model this function for its end behavior. So I can also zoom in a bit. Let me change the, the window so that right now if I change the x-axis so it's um, you know from negative 10 to 10, I think we would see things a little bit better in terms of that modeling. So here you can see how the green function and the black function look really, really similar. But it isn't until we zoom out a little bit that you see the green function and the black function becoming identical in behavior. They're both going up and they're both going down in the same places and at the same rate. So hopefully this video has helped you understand some basic things and we're going to work on them in class. And uh, you know, if you have any comments, I look forward to hearing them or you can write them on the, on the YouTube video.